Greetings, I'm Professor K. And in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about creating an unattended install of Windows 10 Pro. Creating an unattended install allows you to place an answer file at the root of the install image that will respond automatically to each prompt during the setup. You can start the install, go get a cup of coffee, and when you return, your machine will be sitting at the desktop waiting for you. In the past, I have created automated installs for Windows 98, Windows 7, Windows XP, uh, Windows servers. And it's really nice to be able to just slap in the DVD and start the install, walk away, and when you come back, the setup has completed and you're presented with the desktop. To successfully complete this lab, you will need to download and install the following software onto your host machine, not the virtual machine. You're going to need an install of VirtualBox. That's a given. Everybody should have VirtualBox already installed on their machine. You won't have to install it twice. The next item you're going to have to install onto your host machine is 7-Zip. This is an archiver. This is what's going to allow us to extract the contents of the Windows 10 ISO image so that we can add our automated unattend file to the contents and then we can save that folder and convert it into an ISO image using another piece of software. Another item we're going to need is a piece of software that can create a bootable ISO image. Not all ISO software can create a bootable ISO image, so you've got to know the difference. Now for this lab, I'm using Image Burn. This is a free piece of software. Anybody can get it. And there are a number of different mere sites and the author sites that you can download this piece of software. The next piece of software that you're going to need is the Microsoft Windows and Office ISO download tool from Haydock. This is another free application, though it does have some annoying advertisement, but it's still free and it's a great way for you to get access directly from the Microsoft download site for a Windows 10 ISO image. So once you have all this software downloaded, then you can begin the lab. And the last thing we're going to need is internet access so that we can access this Windows answer file generator that is online. This is going to allow us to create the auto unattend XML file that we need for placement inside of the ISO image to respond to the prompts when the install begins for your Windows 10 installation. Here's my caveat. If you already have a Windows 10 ISO image, you don't have to download another one. We next need to download an ISO image for Windows 10. Now to do this, I'm going to use the HiDoc Windows and Office ISO Downloader. This interface gets updated on a regular basis, so you may not be seeing the same interface that I'm looking at right now. Also, there may be a pause while you have to watch some advertisement. If that's the case, just go ahead and let the advertisement play through, and then you'll have access to all of these features that I'm about to show you. So over here in the right window pane, we're going to select the radio button for Windows 10. Give it a second. And after a short pause, the Select Edition window pops up. Go ahead and pull down this window, and we're going to scroll on down here until we come to Windows 10 version 1909. Now I like this image because it is the most trouble-free image that I have been able to find when it comes to using Windows Deployment Services. And underneath the Windows 10 version 1909 November 2019 update, we're going to select Windows 10 Home Pro. Go ahead and confirm. Now we're going to select our language. Go ahead and confirm. And now we're going to select whether we want the 64-bit download or the 32-bit download. Most of us should be using 64-bit hardware by now. So I'm going to go ahead and select 64-bit download. And now I'm just going to save it to a default location of my preference. Once you have your 7-zip installed and you have successfully downloaded the Windows 10 ISO image, you can then go find that ISO image. You can right click on it with your mouse. And from the context menu, you're going to select 7-Zip 
they're going to move on over and you're going to extract to a folder using the same name as the name given to the ISO image that you downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and accept extract to the name of the folder using the same name as the ISO image. Now once the extraction is complete, you have to go back into the download location for that Windows 10 ISO image and you will find that there's going to be a folder there using the same name as the ISO image you downloaded. You can open up this folder and you can see the contents of the ISO image. So the next thing we're going to have to do is to generate the answer file that is going to respond to the prompts when we install Windows 10. So I've gone out here to the Windows Answer File Generator.com site. That's all been abbreviated to just Windows AFG.com. You can find this using Google or there is a link inside the lab that will take you right to the website. So you're just going to fill in the blanks. In this case, my location, I'm just going to type in US. It can be any location you want. It doesn't pertain or have anything to do with the actual install. You want to add some comments, feel free to do so. Now this key here is called a generic key. You're not pirating anything. Microsoft makes available to the public a number of generic keys for their operating systems for the sole purpose of doing automated installs. So this is going to give you 90 days of an evaluation for your Windows 10 once you install it. Again, this is a generic key. You can get these off of the Microsoft site or off of the internet and the links for all the generic keys for Microsoft operating systems are provided for you in the lab. So you have to choose your language, which is English. And I'm going to go to computer name. I'm just going to type in the name I like to use, just like that. Now I'm going to type in your organizational name. Now it is important that you fill in these missing fields because if you don't, when the install comes to this part of the installation and it doesn't find the correct answer, it's probably going to stop and prompt you for the answer and from there on you'll be prompted for the rest of the install. So make sure you fill in all of these missing areas. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to select English, but I want US. Same here. And I'm going to select another time zone. I'm actually in the Philippines. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this down. And now the rest of this, you can go ahead and leave as the default. The username, that can be any username you want. I'm going to go ahead and give it my default. That's going to become a member of the administrators group. And I'm just going to type in a description here, admin, password. Go ahead and type that in. And you're going to do a auto log on and the password never expires. Now what's going to happen with this is that when the machine is done installing, it's going to automatically give you the desktop. Now we're ready to go ahead and print out or generate this answer file. So here it is. This is everything we typed in. And now I can go ahead and download the file. It's going to be automatically named for me. Now you're going to save this file to the root of your extracted ISO image. So let's see how we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I'm going to go to my F drive, my ISO images, and there's my extracted Windows 10 folder. And I'm just going to leave it like so. I don't have to go into any subfolders. It's already been named for me, auto on a 10.xml. Go ahead and save it. Now I can go back into the folder and there is my file at the root of the folder. So by now everyone should have downloaded and installed the ISO generating software, which is ImageBurn. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my screen here. And there's a shortcut on my desktop. You should have the same one. I'm going to go ahead and launch ImageBurn. Now when you launch the software program itself, you can see a number of options here. We want to select the option that will allow us to create an image file from files slash folders. Go ahead and click on that option. 
On this next screen, you have to browse to that extracted folder. So we're going to browse using this little icon here to go on over to our Windows 10 extracted folder. Just go ahead and highlight it and say select folder. Down here at the destination, you have to select where you want to save the ISO file that we're about to generate. So go ahead and browse on back over. And I'm going to go back into my F drive. I'm going to go back in here to my ISO images. And I'm actually going to save it, but I'm going to name it as Win10 underscore unattended underscore install. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one that I have, and I'm going to generate a new one. And I'm going to call it Win10 underscore unattended underscore install. And it's going to give it the extension ISO. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. Now, the next thing we have to do is go over here and click on the Advanced tab. From here, we're going to go down here where it says a bootable disk. Go ahead and open up that tab. And we're going to check this box that says Make Image Bootable. Now we're going to find the boot image. The boot image is located inside of our extracted folder, but we have to go in and find it. So let's go ahead and browse back on over to our extracted folder. I'm inside of the extracted folder. Let's go ahead and back up here one. I open up the extracted folder, and then I'm going to go into the boot folder. From here, I'm going to select the file that is entitled etfsboot.com. That's the file we want to use for the boot image to be bootable. Go ahead and double click it. We have that done. Now the next thing you have to do is go down here to the sectors and you're going to change that 4 to an 8 like so. That's all we have to do to create this bootable ISO image. Now when you're all done just go on back over here to the left window pane, go to the bottom, and you can click on this build option here. Go ahead and click that. Now it's going to pop up and it's going to say that it couldn't help but notice that you have not specified a volume label. It's going to go ahead and give us a volume label. Go ahead and say yes to accept that offer. Now it's going to tell you everything that's going to happen here with this ISO image. It's giving you all the details. You can go ahead and confirm by clicking OK and the ISO file for our unattended install for Windows 10 is now being generated. Now once the ISO file has been generated, you can go ahead and click OK to the informational message. And now you can close out your image burn. We are now ready to launch our unattended install of Windows 10 using VirtualBox. So I'm going to go up here to Machine, I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to move over the memory because it's going to take a little while to install if I don't. If you don't have the memory or the RAM available, don't worry about it. Just leave it at the, at the default. I'm going to give this a user-friendly name. I'm just going to call it Windows 10 Unattended. I'm going to pull down this version window, and I'm going to use my Windows 10 64-bit. I'm going to leave everything else as the default. I'm now going to click on Create. I'm going to accept the defaults on this next window. Click on Create. And now the disk has been created. This is my virtual disk. I'm going to go ahead and power on this virtual disk. And on this next screen it pops up, I'm going to click on this folder option here. And I'm going to browse on over to where I saved that ISO file that we generated. So I'm going to click Add. And there inside of my ISO folder is the Windows 10 unattended underscore install ISO that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click it. I'm going to go ahead and choose. And now I'm going to start the unattended install. And you'll note that there is no prompt to select the actual starting of the install, the version, or any other information. No need to worry about having to partition it. There's nothing for you to do except either sit here and watch the monitor or go get yourself a cup of coffee or go watch TV. This will be the only screen that you're going to see during the installation. Other than some informational messages toward the end of the install when it does the setup of the features for Windows 10.
So once the installation has completed, you will be given the desktop for your Windows 10 Pro. And so that's going to conclude the short video presentation on how we go about creating an unattended install of Windows 10. I'm Professor K. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.